Hey, it's Al Stout, Nikki G here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to install apps from the Google Market onto your phone that'll help your phone run a little better. Uh, now, there's a lot of controversy between apps like this. Uh, people say Android is an operating system that can pretty much control its own uh, apps that run in the background and whatnot. And yes, that's absolutely true, but it doesn't seem to get them all into all the nooks and crannies, and there are more that I would like to be able to control myself because Android may be a smartphone, but it's not the smartest thing in the world. And we're still smarter than it because we created it. Now, the uh, first app I really wanted to show you is called Cool Tool. However, it doesn't seem to be agreeing with the um, program that I'm using to record this for you. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it and then move on. Uh, but up at the top, you can see on my in my status bar, it says M197 megabytes and SD954 gigabytes. Uh, the M is actually my RAM memory, which RAM memory is basically when you first turn on your phone, you have a certain amount of resources. Everything that you do on your phone will use up those resources, such as making phone calls, sending text messages, uh, just browsing the web, browsing to your Google market, or doing things in apps, playing games. It all uses it, and when it gets low enough, your phone starts to run slow and act like a jerk. So, um, anyway, uh, moving on from there, I'll get into that a little more later about this cool tool app. That actually is what I'm using to display that right there. There's many things you can display. You can display your battery percentage, your battery temperature, uh, your I.O. You, there's so many different things. There's just a list of things. You choose what you want. You can color code them any color you want. You can make them any size you want. Uh, single rows, double rows. Uh, I think you can even do triple rows. I could be wrong, though. But And that's also, there's a directional pad in the app that will allow you to literally put it anywhere you want on your phone. Now, I have it up in my status bar because it's out of the way because it does actually go over whatever, wherever you put it. It's not an app on the phone. It's an app running over the phone. Uh, so that's why I keep it up in my status bar. It does usually disappear when I'm watching videos, uh, but not for every app, though. Some apps it stays on. And it's so small, though, even if it did stay on during videos, you wouldn't even notice it. But uh, it's a pretty cool app to have. You could download it, play with it a little bit. I mean, you're not going to hurt your phone messing with that. All it does is display things about your phone. Um, so let's move on from there. And I want to show you a little bit about one of the task killers I have called Advanced Task Killer. And I know there's lots of controversy, like I said, about these things. But <clears throat> I use it, and it's always done me good, better than what the phone can do on its own. Now, this pretty much displays all the apps that you have running in the foreground. Now, you also have a background. Now, you may be able to kill an app in the foreground, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if it is running in the background, you're going to kill it as well. Uh, it will still be running on your phone. It just won't be open on your phone. So here, as you can see to the right, there's little checks. You can uncheck ones that you don't want to kill. Now, when you first get this app and open it, it's going to be loaded with programs that are on. You're literally going to have to go through them individually and ignore specific programs. Now, things like your Gmail or your email, you can go ahead and kill those unless you receive notifications for them. I kill my Gmail. I still get notifications for it. But uh, like your internet, you can kill that in the foreground. It's not that big of a deal. But things like Facebook or Twitter, you're not going to want to kill them because, I mean, then you're not going to get your, your notifications. So let me show you. If you go into settings over here, you can actually go into your services, which is uh, the apps that are running on your phone. You can get to this also from your phone uh, settings. And you can go into where you need to do and force stop apps if they're acting up or you need to force stop them for any reason. But if you go into the settings here, uh, there's a lot of different settings you could do. For instance, automatically start up so the app will start when the phone starts. Uh, you don't have to go into it first. That's a pretty good thing to have. Uh, sometimes you get those little icons in your status bar that you don't like. This one does have the option that you can uncheck it and get that out of there so it's not showing up in your status bar. You can also set it up so you'd exit after kill, which is a pretty good feature that this particular app happens to have. When you hit the kill button to kill the apps, instead of after doing that you have to hit back or exit out of the program you could just hit the kill button and it'll exit out automatically it's pretty cool to have here's my ignore list these are all the apps that I don't want to kill you see my Facebook app my ultra keyboard that's the keyboard that I use I don't use the uh, stock keyboard uh, if I killed that then the stock keyboard would come up every time so I want that running uh, Wi-Fi that's a pretty good uh, tool to have it turns Wi-Fi on 
uh, wherever you go, if there happens to be Wi-Fi in the area, you can set your phone to automatically connect to it. And this way, when you walk into the area, you don't have to turn on your Wi-Fi. It'll automatically go on on its own. I don't want to kill an app like that. I want that running. Okay, so let me back out of here and show you. You can enable an auto kill feature. Uh, now, uh, the auto kill feature is when you press the power button to put your phone into sleep, so you can put it into your pocket or into your uh, purse. It'll automatically kill the apps, so you don't ever even have to go in the program and hit the kill button. And then when you turn your phone back on, if you have auto kill notice checked, it'll tell you at the bottom kill eight apps. You now have this much uh, RAM memory on your phone. You can delay that, so after you turn your phone on, it'll take a couple minutes before it kills the apps, whatever you like to do. There's regular kill, which is actually like a scheduled killer. You can set it up so that it kills apps every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes, every hour. Then there's startup kill. Uh, now, it usually takes about anywhere from a minute to two minutes, depending on what you have running on your phone, for all your apps to start up when you first turn your phone on from it being turned off. Uh, you can actually set this program that when it turns on, it will automatically kill the apps right then and there and get rid of all that rubbish stuff that you got running uh, that you don't want on when you're using your phone. Because you know how some things start, you got to, instead of going into your uh, system and force killing everything you don't want, you can just go ahead and do this. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, it with this. Uh, there's a bunch of other random stuff in here you can look at. Uh, now, let me back out of here and show you uh, if you want to ignore an app you go ahead and hold down on the app that you want to ignore you'll be confronted with this menu you go ahead and hit the ignore in the middle and it'll never show up on this list again so you won't be able to kill it and if you ever want to get it out all you have to do is go back into your settings where it says ignore list and you can go ahead and just tap it and it just send it right back to that list if you accidentally tap the wrong one just ignore it again so that's a pretty good task killer right there I'll actually hit the kill button here and show you. Actually, I'm not going to because the program I'm using is in it. So let me just back out. All right, performance. Uh, system panel lights, the next one that I want to show you. So I'm going to go ahead into that app. <clears throat> now, this app's a little more serious. This app uh, literally can kill processes on your phone that you don't want to kill. Um, it's not going to do anything to brick your phone or anything. And by all means, if you kill something you don't want, one that you didn't want to kill you can always just turn your phone off and back on and the program restarts but what I would do when you first start this is the first thing is go into your settings so hit menu settings and when you go into the settings you see I have only three green check marks here that's all you need checked right down here where it says system processes uncheck that because all those processes you're gonna have to ignore anyway you might as well just uncheck it this way they're obsolete from the list uh, there is a paid version of this, which actually does monitoring. Uh, I don't have a paid version. I don't need it. I don't see any reason for it for my use. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back. And I want to show you that when you first do this, you're going to have a ton of stuff in here. You're literally going to have to take the time to go through each thing and ignore it. Now, for instance, uh, you, you see like weather daemon, stock daemon, settings, uh, I have a Samsung, so my Samsung account, my pop-up receiver, uh, my package access helper. These are things you don't want to kill. Uh, Bluetooth, if you're using Bluetooth, you don't want to kill these things. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go into it, and right at the top here where it says an orange no, and at the bottom where it says a blue exclude, hit that. It'll change that to blue. Now it will not end when you hit end task. However, though, if you go into one that you have an exclude on, like you want to kill this, I want to kill this app. Go ahead into it. Now that you're in it, you can hit end task and it will end it. But it won't end it here where all the main ones are. Now what I would suggest you do with this app or with the task killer app, after you ignore um, from the task killer everything you want to ignore and after you exclude everything from the system panel app that you want to exclude, uh, I would go ahead and hit your end or you know you kill your apps, get out of the program, Wait about a minute or two, go back into the program, and you're going to notice a lot of apps that you killed are back up and running. These are ones that you cannot, without root and the proper program, you cannot stop them from starting back up. They will automatically always start back up, especially widgets are notorious for this. So you have a choice. You can go ahead and just ignore those or in this program exclude those because... Honestly, if you don't, them starting back up is going to use battery. It is going to use uh, uh, RAM memory to start these things back up. So you might as well just ignore them and exclude them. This way they don't use up more time on your phone. 
and then once you get that all set though you should be good now up at the top here you'll see graphs if you touch those little circle graphs it'll bring you to a program I mean it'll bring you to a, a window that'll actually show you if you understand what any of this stuff means uh, you know different graphs about uh, the network the memory the internal storage your CPU activity and whatnot all right so that's that for that app <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this I'm gonna go into the next app that I want to show you now if you don't know what catch is uh, basically everything you do on your phone receives actually leaves catch catch is kinda like uh, programs and things you do on your phone taking a crap and leaving it behind in a waste basket on your phone everything you do on your phone whether it's playing games searching the web uh, searching Google uh, the Google Play Store or just anything you sending text messages actually I don't know what sending text messages does but anyway anything that you do on your phone will leave catch behind and the more catch you build up on your phone uh, the less you're going to be able to do with it some programs won't even run right until you clear their catch first uh, I would suggest doing this often I do it at least every three days uh, but let's go ahead into that program and let me show you what that is. Now this is a pretty cool program because not only can you clear your catch, but you can clear your calls and your texts. You can uh, clear any defaults that you set up. Like in other words, uh, I set up this browser to be my default browser. So when I hit the browser button, it goes to this particular app. And let's say you don't want to do that anymore. You can go ahead in here. History cleaner. You can clear your history from your uh, browser, from your... Uh, your Google Play Store if you want to clear out that history let's say you're doing something you don't want no one to see uh, you can clear it from here I mean you can clear it from the actual app too but I use this for the catch cleaner and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna go in here now usually when you open this up right away it'll automatically calculate how much catch you have and you can have up to megabytes of catch space now there's 1024 megabytes in a uh, gigabyte so that's a lot but you can literally have 80 megabytes I mean if you don't clear your catch I wouldn't doubt if you did this and had 500 megabytes of catch in here. That's 500 megabytes that you're taking away from your SD card, which is going to cause it to run slower. It's going to use up space in there. Sometimes you need a certain amount of space on your memory card. You don't have it. You can clear your catch, and maybe you'll gain it. Uh, you don't gain much, but you'll gain you'll gain quite a bit of kilobytes, uh, which make up your megabytes, which make up your gigabytes. So let's just say it didn't calculate it for you. Down at the bottom here, you'll see a folder with a trash can. You can go ahead and hit that and it'll tell you you know how much you got added up here mine says no catch size used because I already done it now if you go into your settings which is all the way down here to the right uh, you can actually set up intervals for it to clear catch on its own you don't have to manually go in and do it you can set it up to do it every three days every week I think you can set it up to a month if I'm not mistaken uh, so that's pretty cool about it uh, I think there's also a notification you can turn on in the top it'll tell you when it's clearing catch or when your catch needs to be cleared I don't have that on you can turn that off you can turn the icon off whatever you want to do but those are pretty much it so those three programs there actually those four programs well the three programs will help your phone to run better have fourth grant programs pretty cool to have to display things I know some developers might like things like that uh, or people who are just really into their phone as you can see I am uh, so that's pretty much it, all right? Atal Style Nikki G here with uh, things you can do on your that you can do on your Android phone without using a computer, and just things you can do in general. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or leave some comments down at the bottom. Maybe other people can help you out with it, all right? So uh, until next time, I'm out.